Organic farming is steadily increasing. That's good. Pour parler d'agriculture et d'Europe à la jeunesse. Der Klimawandel erfasst immer weitere Teile der Welt. Farmers help us bring nature back and preserve biodiversity. Ceux qui sont dans le rouge s'en sortent quand ils font plus vert. La qualité dans ce pays, elle doit être là pour tous. Welcome back to Food for Europe. And hopefully this little break has well and truly whetted your appetite for more of this podcast series on the best of Europe's farming and food. This episode is all about research and innovation and the way in which it's shaping agriculture now and in the future. Farmers and farms are facing the need to adapt to a greener, more sustainable future. But in many ways, farmers themselves are already at the heart of this transition. That's the message from the EU Agri Research Conference in Brussels, where policymakers, experts, community representatives, and of course farmers, have gathered to consider how research and innovation can enhance farming and rural livelihoods. Well, here to tell us more is our first guest, Magda Kopczynska, who's a Deputy Director General of the European Commission's Directorate General for Agriculture and Rural Development, which has organized the conference. Magda, welcome. Thank you so much for having me here. Okay, so first, let's talk about money. How much investment is going into research and innovation in agriculture? In this current financial perspective, because as you know, EU works on a, on a basis of seven-year budget, so from 2021 to 2027, agriculture is part of the so-called Cluster 6, which covers different uh, topics, including agriculture. And this Cluster 6 is at the level of 9 billion euro, actually a bit more than 9 billion euro. What's important for us is that it's twice as much as we had in the previous financial perspective, which means there is more money for research and innovation in agriculture, which I think is a good thing to have. And what's the purpose of this conference? What are you hoping to achieve? Uh, what we wanted to check with the conference is first and foremost to verify whether where we think priorities for research and innovation in agriculture are, whether it is shared by the audience and by the people who will then benefit from that. Then to see whether the instruments or tools that we put on the table to access and use research and innovation, whether they are the right ones, and also to start picking ideas for the future. I get the impression from this conference that the Commission is doing as much listening as it is talking about policy. I know that there is this perception that European policies is always top down, but actually it never is. But you're right, this conference now was even more than normally about listening also because it's really good to meet with 400 people in the same room and talk during uh, plenary, during breakout sessions, over coffee, over drink. This place is also about meeting one another. The European Commission has brought together farmers and researchers to co-create innovative solutions funded by Horizon Europe. How does this link with the CAP? I think there's one important element that CAP has a huge added value and that is scalability. Because with research projects, we always have a very closed group of people, communities, uh, research institutes that are involved in specific projects. But it is only with additional funding, such as the one coming from CAP, when we can bring those positive results and put them on the ground to a greater scale. And only then we see the impact of research, the, the, the new innovative techniques, the new innovative solutions, the new technologies put on the ground by farmers. Well, you mentioned people coming from outside the EU and we'll be talking to one a little later in the programme. But Magda, finally, is there anything else you want to add? I very much hope that everybody who's listening is already making a mental note that they need to come to the fourth edition of Agri Research Conference, which should be sometime around 2026. But we'll come back to you on this one. We await your news with interest. Magda Kopczynska, Deputy Director General of DG Agri, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Well, from a policymaker to a farmer now, and someone who's played a key role in this conference as a speaker and a motivator too. Welcome, Diana Lenzi. First, Diana, tell us about yourself. 
I am the president of CESIA, the European Council of Young Farmers, and I am a farmer from Italy. Indeed, you manage the family wine estate in Tuscany. You didn't bring any with you, but we'll forgive you that. However, it's fair to say that wine's been produced in much the same way for hundreds of years. So what role is there for research and innovation in making wine? So you're right. The process is a very natural one. It's been done for millennia. But what we have now the capacity of actually following is, is, is the details. So having all that information that research can give us and, and uh, innovation can give us on how to make sure that our grapes are actually healthy the moment we bring them into the cellar is very important. But also in the fermentation process. So we know that this is something that the more we analyze the wine, the more we know when our intervention is actually needed. Is there also a role for research and innovation when it comes to making wine production more sustainable? Grapes are very delicate in many ways. Uh, they are very susceptible to climate change and also to attack from pests. So viticulture is actually one of the sectors that needs most plant protection products. Application uh, is key, but also using research and innovation to see how we can change certain molecules, certain principles that are now working in our plant protection products and substituting them with like, let's call them generally more green molecules, I think it is, is fundamental. Now you mentioned the European Council of Young Farmers of which you're president. How are young farmers leading the sector's embrace of research and innovation? I think they really see that uh, because a new farmer needs to have so many hats, he's not only just the guy on the tractor in the field, but he needs to have so much more knowledge. He knows that that knowledge is not something that is just going to come to him from his own studies, that he needs to be able to rely on consultants, on people who are experts. That information is going to make him better in what he does every day. And I think really there there is this feeling of need of creating these bonds with researchers and, and making sure that research is then applicable on the field, but at the same time know that there's a collaboration, that we are also showing where we need research to go. You've talked about the challenges of a winery, but give us an example from Tuscany of the way research and innovation is strengthening the livelihoods of farmers and rural communities more generally. One of the biggest problems we've had so far in, in, in Tuscany was the fact that the population of both wild boar and deer has been uh, exponentially growing in the past uh, decade or so. And so how do we protect our vineyards. People love to come to Tuscany to see the vineyards. And if everything is just closed behind wires and fences, this is not going to work. So I was very uh, intrigued and I have actually seen the application of these uh, instead sensors that will create a, a sound fence when they detect that actually there is a, an animal approaching. Thank you, Diana, for your perspective from beautiful Tuscany. It wasn't all theory and policy at the Agri Research Conference. Participants also had the chance to venture outside the Brussels bubble and visit some farms around the Belgian capital to see farm innovation in action. One example, a biodigester using cow manure to produce methane to create electricity that powers robotic milking machines for those same cows. Meanwhile, I caught up with one of the speakers at the conference's opening session, Roger Schulter, from the University of Wageningen in the Netherlands. And I began by asking him how he sees the challenges facing farmers today. We see climate change is all of a sudden here and it's around us all of the time. Uh, we also see the, the role of food in the world, the weaponization of food, if you like, with the war in Ukraine, the weaponization of energy, and with that, fertilizer prices. And we see supply chain disruptions that we've never seen before. Disruption is, is now the new normal. Uh, so we're moving from an era where we try to make farming ever more efficient. We're now moving into an era where we have to help farmers and, and the farming system and the food system become resilient to, to whatever shocks are thrown at them. If the farmer has more data and is better informed, is that going to make them more resilient? It is often assumed that if only farmers have more information, they would do the right thing. They would want to become more sustainable. In our experience, the opposite is actually the case. Most farmers that we work with are not short of information. They are overwhelmed by information. Everyone around the farm wants something different from the farmer, whether that is they're, they're being asked 
to deliver on climate change than it has to, to deliver on, on water quality, on biodiversity. So how can authorities and other stakeholders play their parts in helping farmers rise to this challenge? Most of the time we leave it to the farmer to make sense out of all this information and turn that into a viable operational farming system. And that is a real challenge that where we can we cannot put the responsibility for that solely at the feet of the farmer because it also requires that we create the conditions for the farmers to respond to these challenges, that we create enabling policies, that we create an enabling business environment, that we create an enabling knowledge environment. Thanks to Roger Schulter for his input. Now, as you'll probably have picked up, our guests so far come from different European countries with different agricultural traditions and prospects, but a similar outlook on the potentials and possibilities of research and innovation. And my next and final guest is from even further afield, and I'll let him introduce himself. Yeah, I'm Gilles uh, Saint-Don. I'm the Assistant Deputy Minister for the Science and Technology Branch at Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, and also serve as a a chief scientist for the department, for agriculture department. Canada, well, it's a country with one-tenth of the population of the European Union, but twice as much surface area. And it's one of the world's agricultural commodity superpowers. So how is research and innovation contributing to the development of agriculture in Canada, Gilles? At the, at the very top of our list is climate change. So uh, uh, having to develop practices that will just like help us mitigate and adapt to climate change. And the second thing, the second area we're paying a lot of attention to is, is to try to create some resilience in the system, try to deal with drought, to deal with insects and diseases as well. Uh, I would say uh, circular ag uh, agriculture, which is uh, another area that is of big interest to us. And the last one would be digital. When it comes to research and innovation, to what extent are farmers themselves driving its development? I'd like to talk about the introduction of a living lab that we did in the last uh, five years, basically where we have the, uh, the farmers are involved throughout the, the entire innovation process. They are part of the co-developing the, the research. And we, the, 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 the important point is we test the practices on working farm at the landscape level. So with the producer and not only for the producer. They've been, always been involved in great support of research and by being enthusiastic adopter of new technology. Like they've always been looking for the new opportunities. How is Canada working with EU countries in the agriculture and agri-food sector? There is an initiative that was launched under the uh, under the, the auspices of the G20 back in 2010, and it's the creation of the uh, G20 meeting of the agricultural chief scientists. And this is a forum where we have a chance to explore opportunity to work together and all of this. We have the Wheat Initiative that is hosted by uh, Germany right now. Uh, we also work with satellites using remote sensing. What are you especially proud of having achieved in Canada? I've been in agriculture all my career. And, and what we've seen in the last uh, 30 years in the area of uh, soil conservation has been phenomenal. And it is the introduction of no-till, mostly in Western Canada. So no-till uh, was brought in as a way to protect the land against uh, wind erosion. And Canada is a big country in large of acreage. And the, we managed to retire like, 25 million hectares of summer fallow. And what will you take back home to Canada from your participation in this conference? Gilles Sandon, Assistant Deputy Minister of Agriculture from Canada, thanks very much for joining us here on Food for Europe. A reminder from Gilles there that learning lessons from each other is in our common interests in a world of globalised agriculture and food supply chains. And it's a great way to round off our Food for Europe podcast on this conference on research and innovation in agriculture. Thanks to Gilles, to my other guests, Roger Schulter, Diana Lenzi and Magda Kopczynska for giving their perspectives on an aspect of European agriculture that is not as well known and appreciated as perhaps it should be. Well, hopefully this episode will encourage you to find out more about the link between innovation and what ends up on our dinner plates. 
That's all for this episode. Join us again in a couple of weeks for another look at farming and food in Europe. Until then, bon appétit. Organic farming is steadily increasing. That's good. Pour parler d'agriculture et d'Europe à la jeunesse. The climate change affects ever wider parts of the world. Farmers help us bring nature back and preserve biodiversity. Ceux qui sont dans le rouge s'en sortent quand ils font plus vert. La qualité dans ce pays, elle doit être là pour tous. 